Antioch, preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. But some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. The news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of how they should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man. Underline that word in your Bible, please. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and of faith. And a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christian in Antioch. You can underline the word Christian in Antioch. Father, we bless you this morning. We yield our body, spirit, and soul unto your spirit and your leadership. We pray that we desire to follow the example of thy faithful servant Barnabas. And as we go through the scripture, you give us a better comprehension, a better understanding of our identities as Christians. Seeking not our own, but seeking you and others. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. When a child is born, there is expectation on that child to grow. Not only to grow, but to become somebody in life. All parents aspire their children to be greater than them. All parents. Please, if you agree with me, just say amen. amen. It doesn't cost you to say amen. amen. The reason my prayer that what has limited me will not limit my children. Amen. Where I have not been able to be, they will get there and beyond. I don't know about you, but I'm speaking from my own conviction. So that I use that word as a relative understanding that if, if, if it applies to me, it applies to you. What is the responsibility of the new church? The new church here is not the four corners that we all sit down on Sundays, Fridays, and, and Wednesdays. But for us, but Jesus Christ said, I'm coming for the church. The church is the wife of Jesus Christ. And it's allowing the word that you hear on a daily basis to watch you, to cleanse you, to adorn you, and prepare you for when he will come in return to come and marry you for eternity. For eternity. So his desire is for you to remain, to not to remain stagnant, but to grow, to, to be nurtured and mature. So when he comes, he will come for a ready-built, ready-made, well-prepared church. And we saw this among the first Christian. It's the only way you come across the word Christian in, in the Bible. The church of Antioch. The church of Antioch. But striking me most in this context is the name of Barnabas. The name of this man called Barnabas. He was not one of the 12 original apostolic fathers. He wasn't. After the demis of the betrayer of Jesus Christ, his position was vacant. His bishop robe 
was hanged somewhere. But Bible said, after a while, they said to themselves, let's we, how long are we going to allow this position of this betrayer to be vacant? And Bible say, a man called Basabas and Matthias were named. They brought it to and the apostolic, the 11 apostolic fathers casted lot. You know how you dies? They casted lot among the few. And Bible say Matthias was picked to fill the vacancy, the vacuum created by the betrayer. So they became 12. In this contest, this man called Barnabas was not there. Barnabas was just a Christian like you and I that was preached to. He heard the sermon of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He became passionate. He became a Christian. He was not one of the apostolic fathers. He was not chosen to be apostle. But he was a devout man. Filled with the Holy Spirit. A man of faith. And above all, Bible testified that he was a good man. A good man. And that is what I want us to think on this morning. The wisest man that ever lived say this way in Proverbs 22 verse 1. Say prefer to have a good name than riches. And sometimes last year we spoke about the avenues to get revenues. I talk about wisdom. I talk about knowledge. And I said above all your name. Your name. Your name is, 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 is cash machine. Your name. If you understand it, it's not just a till where you go to put It's a cash machine with ready-made pin numbers. Your name. If you have good name. If you have good name, you will be sitting down in your low estate. The rich will come to seek for you. For I read in my Bible that the queen of Sheba came with gold and silver, surrender all to Solomon because Solomon had a good name. Solomon didn't travel far to the east or to the west. He had good name and the good name worked for him. The good name in his time, Bible said, gold were like sands in Israel. Where there was no gold mine in Israel. Good name. So he penned down in 22 chapter of, of Proverbs. He said, desire to have a good name. Shows a good name. Shows a good name than money and riches. There are many rich men. Many billionaires who are out there now that you all know, that once they mention their name, you just like, please forget about him. And they are billionaires. And we know some that you don't even to know their name, but you see, you don't even see, you feel the residues of their grace to humanity. Are we talking together? And uh, we have been in this church, I've uh, been on this line for some times now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. You want me to go there again? Yes, sir. Okay. Are, are we? <laughs> Warren Buffett gave Bill Gates 24 billion US dollars. You, you see, are you not glad to hear Warren Buffett now? Right. Are you not glad to hear Bill Gates? Okay, I don't want to call some people who are billionaire now. Because if I call their name now, you say. <laughs> Desire a good name. Far beyond and above riches. Far beyond and above riches. Desire a good name. Jesus Christ will approach one and I say, Good, good master. I said, no. I said, there is no one that is good except God in heaven. But Bible called Barnabas a good man. 
a good man. Jesus Christ refused to be called a good man. But Bible referred to this man as a good man. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let me, let me give you a rundown a little bit about him. Then we go into the word of God. The name Barnabas was not his original name. His name was Joseph. Barnabas simply means, by interpretation in the Greek, son of encourager. That's what it means. Son of encourager. In Acts chapter 4, Bible recorded that after he became a newly converted Christian, in the days that the apostolic father was sitting down, and all the Christians were bringing all their resources at their feet, and they were sharing. He sold his land. Everything that he owns, he sold them and brought it to the apostolic father. That was the first time his name was mentioned. A Christian. He was later known to be the one. In Acts 14, 14, he was called to be an apostle. Now, we all know the story of Saul, Saul of Tarsus, yes, the persecutor of the church that became converted and became a radical Christian. Now, when the news of Paul, Saul that became Paul now, came to the church in Jerusalem, they refused to have anything to do with him because they believed he was a persecutor of the church. It was Barnabas who single-handedly trained him. Oh, no. You, you don't get it. While others refused to accept him, Barnabas was not an apostle. But he called Paul aside. Say, Paul, I'm going to show you all the doctrines of the elders. I will show you. They're not going to accept you. I will accept you. A good man. Listen, good name does not just fall from heaven. Good name does just not come overnight. Ah. Ah. It comes over a period of time. People are watching you. You see, I, I, I'm saying it and I will say it without, with, without any... The reason why people are not coming into the Christendom is because of you and because of me. i take it again. The reason why we are not having people to disciple is because of your attitude and because of my attitude. It's the attitude. This is not the time that you will tell people, do what I say, but don't do what I do. They want to see what you are doing, and they will do what you are doing. Your children copy after you. Your children flow after you. They see what you are doing. They hear what you are saying. When they grow up, they will say what you are saying. And that is it. If you're asking somebody to come to your church, somebody to come to your church, and they're not coming, shake yourself out. Forget about the excuse that they have their own church. So check yourself out. Check yourself out. Check yourself out. As a pastor, I'll go to other churches, and I will let you know I have invitation. I will not be invited if I don't have good name. You don't need to say yes. You don't need to say yes. If they're not following you to your church, and I say it without reserve, you are a man coming to show your wife is sitting at home, shut yourself out. You are a woman, married, coming to church, and your wife is not coming with you, shut yourself out. You can, you can insult me on Friday night, on a Saturday night, because you want me to come to church with you, you suddenly change. 
Then you say, let's go to church on Monday. No, I will tell you, Friday preceded Saturday. I will tell you, it is not just Saturday. It started from Friday. Do you remember what you did on Friday? I'm not telling your pastor. I'm not coming to such a church. Good name. You can act it. You can act it. In whatever you're doing, wherever you go, it comes out. It's attitude. It's called attitude. And it's the attitude that determines the altitude, the height of where you will go in life. It is the attitude. It's the attitude. You see people applauding you, shake yourself out. Are they applauding you because of you doing something right or you doing something wrong? Shake yourself, put yourself on the scale. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Menabas was a Cyprus uh, Jew. He was born in Cyprus. He was not living in Jerusalem. But he was a Jew that have migrated from Jerusalem based on persecution, but lives and resides abode in Cyprus. While he was there, he became converted to Christianity. My dear, Christianity did not just come from Jew. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ himself came to radicalize, to change their belief system. They turned their back against him. And he went to the Gentiles. He went to the Gentiles. You still see up till now in our so-called Jerusalem, many of them are yet to believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. But they hold on to their faith, their mosaic faith. They hold on to it. But the time is coming. If you read Romans chapter 15, 16, 14, 15, 16, the time is coming that the old nation of Israel will confess Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. Then the end will come. Apostle Paul said, it is my desire that all Jews will become saved. It is his desire. It is the desire of God that they will all be saved. But if they believe now, the end will come. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 God is good. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Let's, let's look at, at what this young man did in the, in the scripture. I would say, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Then News of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem. And they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of her, they should continue with the Lord. Now, Peter came into Antioch. Peter, the bedrock of the church. He had two faces. To the Jew, he stood, he prays to them, they have to be circumcised. To the Gentiles, he told them, you are Gentile. You don't even need the scripture. You don't need, you don't need to be a converter at all. It's not meant for you. Now, he had to be rebuked. Paul challenged him. The grace is for all. Jesus appeared to me on my way to persecute the church. But here I am. He has sent me to the Gentile. Christ has sent you to the Jew. There is no Jew, there is no Gentile. Say Christ. Barnabas came into Antioch, and Barnabas embraced. The Bible says he was glad to see the manifestation of the grace of God. Brother and sister, there is no competition in this race. There is no competition. I said it here last week, and I will repeat it again. The reason why the church is not striving well 
is because of competition. It's because of competition. We are scared of losing members. We are scared of, and we're not doing anything. All we're we doing is just fishing from one pond to the other. We're not converting new people. The world is waiting for our testimony. The world is waiting for revelation knowledge of the word of God from you. And here we are, we are busy fighting ourselves. Condemning our local churches because we are frightening they might perhaps outraise us. Hello? I have a track and I have my own race. It is my prayer to remain focused in my own track and in my own race. I'm not looking at anybody. I'm not even praying to be distracted by anybody. So you should be in your own race. The side mirror is not meant to guide you to your destiny. Hello? Uh -uh. This is adult class. You can't get to your destiny by looking through side mirror. Are we together? It's side mirror. That's why they call it side mirror. It's just so you to watch out what is beside. The rear mirror can't take you to your destiny. It is just to let you know the dangers behind. Have a look and focus on the destiny. So you use the windshield, the front view mirror to look into your, don't be distracted by anybody. Don't be distracted. It is your race. Salvation is a personal thing. It is a race before you, it's a race before me. Barnabas understood this. Oh, no. He was not competing with anybody. He allowed Paul to outshine him. Oh no. He did not entertain rivalry, unnecessary rivalry. When others were running away from Paul, he took Paul in. He educated Paul. And Paul was called an apostle. Still, he did not mind. There is a crown for your labor. Oh. Hey, Mama just said it. He, 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 he qualified the call. God is not waiting to call the qualified. No one is qualified. I say, I heard this one. He said, Who am I? Say, Do am I? I have seen God. God said, No. But God cleansed him, brought a coal of fire. Place it on his strong and said, Did your iniquities you remove? Place. I'm giving my word into your mouth. Go and Bible say, Isaiah heard the word of God and said, Here I am, O Lord, send me. You have an assignment. We all have an assignment. Time is ticking. Don't wait for no one. Your husband cannot do it. Do it. Your wife cannot do it. Do it. It's an individual calling. Individual race. Amen. God is not going to ask you how did your wife spend her Christian race. How she's not going to. He's not going to ask you. He will ask you all the grace I vested on you, all the grace I invested on you, all the opportunity I gave you, all the power I bestowed. What did you do with it? He's not going to say your pastor did. And that's why you didn't end up where that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. There will be challenges, there will be tribulations, there will be side track and side talk. Hold on to your faith in Him. Apostle Paul, Apostle, Apostle uh, Barnabas was called a man of faith. Do you know what is it to be a man of faith? He despised all the odds. All the challenges. Where Peter failed, he was successful. Oh no. In the days of Jesus Christ, in the book of Luke, chapter 22, 
Jesus Christ said to the to Apostle Peter, he said, Satan had planned to sift you like a sham. Say, but I have prayed you. Do you know the reason why Peter wanted to, why Peter wanted to be to be sifted by Satan? Because Peter used of power. He used of power to be the head of the apostles. No one shows him. No one elected him. But he said he saw himself as the head. He was already fighting for mastership. Why Jesus Christ was still there? And Satan saw that. Satan saw that in his hand, and he was ready to, 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 to squeeze life out of him. Jesus Christ paid for him because he entertained pride in his heart. Now, Barnabas had the opportunity to be Lord over Apostle Paul, uh, to call him my protege, to call him my son in the Lord. He had the opportunity. He wa Paul was, was not accepted. Everybody rejected him. But Barnabas stretched the arm of love. He saw beyond, beyond naked eye. He saw through the eyes of faith. Uh, if the grace of God called me, and that grace has net me, connected me to you, it is the same grace. Jesus is one and one for all. He went out of his way, brought him in, encouraged him. The Bible says he taught him the doctrines of the apostolic fathers. The healing stuff, he showed it to them. He brought him to Jerusalem. He stood by him. He's a born again Christian. He has confessed Christ as a Lord and personal Savior. Why won't you accept him? He stood by him. He was not saying, um, I'm his master. I'm his father. Uh, where I go, he will go. He gave him time to develop. He supported, he encouraged. He supported, he comforted him. Listen, in the journey of faith, there will be challenges. There will be in a family set up there. Are. So it will be in the church setup. It happened between this young man that we are talking about today. <laughs> Barnabas and Paul in their missionary journey. They had problem. Paul said, let's pick up Mark to go on a missionary journey. They went. They went. It was glorious. Beautiful. They came back. They were witnesses. They were testimony. But issues happened. Now, when they want to go again, they said, Mark, Mark said, no, I don't feel like going this time around. I have issues to deal with. So Paul picked an offense that this guy is not serious for God. Barnabas said, encourage him. Leave him. If he's not good now, leave him. You choose another person. Paul picked offense. He went and shoot Silas. Barabbas went and picked him up, and they went together. Let me tell you. Later on, Paul referred to him in the book of 2 Timothy 4, 21. The same mark that he refused and he was angry with, he referred to him as a good man. There will be differences, but let our differences be in the things of God. Oh. The gift is from one Holy Spirit, but manifests in diverse way. In diverse way. Don't let us allow Satan into the house of God, feeding him into our hearts. The lust of our eye, the lust of flesh, and the pride of life. You don't want to give up. You don't want to give. It is like I, I will not be the one to bend down. I will not be the one to let go. Who are you competing with? You competing with yourself? You competing with yourself? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can't be a good master if you cannot be a servant. Not the ordinary servant, a good servant. 
if you have never been in need, when you have abundance, you don't even appreciate what you have. Oh, no. If you have never been marginalized in life, you can't appreciate what freedom is. As the Israelites, they will tell you, 430 years in captivity, when they came to Canaan land, ah, they knew this is God working. Psalm 44, 1 through 8 says, they did not possess the land by their hand. God planted, that was what the Bible said. Say, God planted them in the land. God will plant you in your destiny. Listen, arm of flesh cannot do anything for you. You are struggling, that is why you are not seeing the grace of God. Stop thinking for God. Let God do it for you. Oh. The battle is over. The battle is over. He won and he gave up, he handed over victory. Oh no. He was buried for your sake. The third day he resurrected. And he said, now all power, not one or two of you or many, all power in heaven and on earth have been given unto me. And I'm giving you the key. Every door you open shall be open. Every door you lock shall be locked. Don't compete with yourself. Compete with Satan. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. Good man. He was a good man. It is my prayer from today. People that will see you will call you a good man, a good woman. Yeah. There are some that if they call you and they say they wanted to come and visit you, say, I'm not home. Any witness? Even though they are your neighbor, you say, no, I'm not home. You tell your children, tell them I'm not home. Because of their attitude, because of their character. They don't have good quality. They don't have good name. That will not be your portion. As a Christian in season, in out of season, you will shine for God. In the name of Jesus. Your God has made you a light into the world. Oh, to establish your life. He said, no one put up a lamp and hide it under the table, but it will place upon the table where it will shine. Your life will shine. In this evil generation, your light will shine in Jesus' name. A good man. I don't have anything, but I have a good name. You don't have physical cash. Have a good name. The cash will come. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The, the, just, just have a good name. And we have people who stay, Pastor, are you home in the middle of the night? I say, stay where you are. I'm coming to meet you. Some will call me evening. I will tell them I'm in the city. Don't laugh. Energy suckers. Eh? Say, Pastor, are you around? Oh, I'm in the city. No, all right. Get another time. That will not be you in Jesus' name. Have a good name. It's better than gold and silver. Don't, don't give me anything. Don't have a good name. Everybody will love to associate with you. When you have a good name. There are families, if your children say they want to marry that family, say, where? When we were growing up, okay, let me leave that because of time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Back home in Africa, before you get married, they will send people to go and check up your family. Thank God our mommy are here. They will send people. Which house? <laughs> so go and check them out. I don't want my daughter or my son to marry anyhow. So go and check them out. They are background. They were looking for good names. It's not money. They don't marry for money. They need good names. Ah, your reputation come out of good name. If you don't have name, you can't have reputation. Have good name. A good name. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Barnabas was a good man. A good man. A man of solid moral and ethical establishment. He read the Torah, the Old Testament very well. He got all his belief from the Old Testament. He studied the law, the commandment of God. He studied, he knew it very well. And he used us as a measure ah, for his lifestyle. A basis, a moral basis for his lifestyle. People tell me, tell me tradition. What's tradition? Tradition that is not established with Bible, with the word of God. Culture that is not established in the word of God. Please discard it. To, you will only get good moral if you believe what the Bible has said. Because say, money means nothing to me but to do the will of God. Because a man who worth 84 billion US dollars currently, you are watching me that I know it often because I have to know them because one day you will hear me too. You will hear about me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Praise God. I read about them because I know one day my name will enter there. In your lifetime, not after you die. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. At all the time. Is God alone that defeats uh, perfection? Jesus Christ said it when he was asked about it. But in this area, because of his his belief system, his moral concept, he was called a man of perfection, a man of excellence. What will people say about you? Or what are you saying about you? What are you saying about me? A righteous man can judge anything. I, I take that again. Uh, a righteous person can judge anything. When the Bible says don't judge, it's not that you, a righteous person, will see evil, you will say evil is righteous. No. Then that means you are still part of the world. A righteous person judge anything. You judge the righteous, you judge. As a matter of fact, one of our grace, when Christ comes, is that we all that make it to be with him, we will judge the, 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 the unbelievers. Based on the scriptural knowledge of the word of God, you are meant to judge the world. Let the world know what you are doing is not good. Based on the word of God. They might not believe it. They might not listen to you and obey you. But you see, our moral concept is established in the word of God. That's what we, we push into the world there. This is who we are. When other religions say fight, Jesus Christ said, no, don't fight. They slap you, turn another one to them. They take one your, your tie, give them the, 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 the whole suit. That is our moral concept. That is who we are. Don't say, Pastor, that is too hard. I can't do it. It will not happen to you. Just believe. Nobody is coming to hold you and say, give me your tie there. You will give. It will not happen. No one will slap you one and you will talk. It won't happen. But just believe. He will protect before it comes to you. But believe. Believe. Thank you, Jesus. He was full of the Holy Spirit. Now we know in the day of the Pente, in the day of Pentecost, the old the whole congregation were filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. The Bible made known that all of them that were there were of different background, from different culture, from different languages, and they began to speak in different languages. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5, 18 say, don't be filled with wine, but what? Fill with the Holy Spirit. So there's some of us that are still struggling with little, okay? Bible says, don't be filled with wine. Uh, no amen to that? But be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it, 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 I don't want to use the word, it will intoxicate you where necessary. 
<laughs> he will charge you all where necessary. You don't need to shine your face. He will shine your face for you. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And it will strengthen you. Barabbas was called a good man. Filled with the Holy Spirit. It was after he was baptized in the Holy Spirit that the characteristics of Jesus Christ manifested in his life. The reason why you and I are struggling is because we have not allowed ourselves to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, he comes upon you. He becomes resident on you. And now the outward notice will be seen. Because he is the one who is talking through you. He's acting through you. He's speaking through you. It was his Barnabas. They were concentrating on the old Barnabas. But it was not him. This is the new Barnabas. And that was the joy of a new church. The growth of a new church. The new man in you have to give grace to those who are longing. Who are yearning. If you are still comfortable doing things that you used to do before you become a Christian, then you are not a Christian yet. No, amen? amen. If you are still comfortable doing what you used to do before you become a born-again Christian, quote and unquote, you are not a born-again Christian, quote and unquote. Your old man should give way for your new man. The new man we're talking about is the Spirit of God. Barnabas had the Spirit of God in him. And Bible say, everyone that come across him, call him a good man. He was not acting. God bless you, Satan. Barnabas was not acting. In ceasing and out of ceasing, even when he saw leadership role was at stake, he was a good man. How I wish all of you can come here and be preaching, I will sit down there. To him be the glory. Where is the rivalry coming from? About the kingdom? No. Let's all go out there and impart the world. Bring them to him by your character. They will know you. Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Galatians 5, 22, 23. Simplify the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Not the gift of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. Once you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, then the manifestation of the fruit of the tree of life in you will begin to manifest. Love. You don't struggle to love others. Uh, no, amen. amen. <laughs> you don't struggle to love somebody because love is God. Oh, I put it in a different God is love. And if you have become a daughter or a son of God, you must be love. <laughs> to such there is no law. Galatians 5, 23. To such, to all the fruits of the spirit he gives, there is no law. What that means is that there is no limitation. You don't give too much. You don't love too much. Oh my God, you didn't get it. Pastor, but I'm the only one who loves him. Who told you you love him? too much. If you love, you don't, you don't, you don't measure your love. Oh. Oh, oh that, that brother is getting it. You don't measure love if you have love. <laughs> it was the pain attached to love that is simplified love. 
Without pain, you can appreciate love. Without disappointment, you can appreciate ah. Without failure, in some times, you can appreciate the love of God cause pain on Christ. The love of God made him to endure all the pain, the stabbing, the rejection, the spitting, the hitting, the beating because of the love he had for you. The love he had for you. Oh, do you ever experience buying some experience, uh, uh, expensive like wrist watch or diamond and gold jewelry, some of you? Some of us who are, praise God. And you have some that are given to you that are not measured up. Do you put them together in the same safe? Why not? Because of the value. Uh, so, so, so some, some clothes that you pick up on the street and the one you went to Mrs. to buy, do you pick them together? Some people are laughing. No. There are some that <laughs> even after you wore them, you have to dry them and put them back in the closet. Why? Because value. It is that same value, the value of God, that God placed on you that he loved, that he allowed his son to die for you that he loved. I, I wish you get that one. God value you. Oh, he, he, he value me now. He value us. That he turn his back against himself. And say, for these ones that I love so much, because they believe in me that I love them, I will die for them. God value you. And God value us. That's our identity in him. So tell me now, if you are loving somebody and you are saying, I think, Pastor, I love him too much. Who told you you love? By what measurement are you using? Huh? Or oh, a oh, brother saying, Pastor, I think I'm the only one who loves her. She doesn't love me. With what measure are you using to measure your love? Is it through the eyes of God who died for you? Or the eyes of your mother or father? Or your bank account? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord be with us in Jesus' name. A man of faith. Let's stand on our feet. He was a man of faith. He was a man of faith. Unshavering faith. Unwavering faith. Unshakable faith. His mind was fused on the things of God, on what God stood for. His mind was fused. Isaiah 26, 3 says, for those who are, are fused on me, I have given them peace. He saw peace in all that he does. He will not see no competition, contention, or complaint, or strife. He was not, his eyes were fused. Stephen, while he was about to give up the ghost, a man that was stoned to death, said, forgive them, Lord, for they don't know what they are doing. Many of us have quitted, quitted our mission. We are no more on the mission field. Evangelists who are quick to share the word of God with people, they have been discouraged. Those who wake up in the morning, and tell their family member, come on, let's have a family get together prayer. They are stopped. Our first love is weakened. It's no more there. I want us to pray this morning or this afternoon. What will the heavenly host speak about you now? Would they call you a man of it? Would they call you a good woman or a good man? What would they say? I want you to pray unto the Lord. It's a prayer of rededication of your spirit unto God. You can do better than what you are doing. This church can do better than this. And what I mean by church is you and I. And we can do better than this. Ask God to impart you to do better. 
He know you by name. He call you by name. His blood run through your vein. He has a mission for you. He has a vision for you. Ah, tell him, Lord, in my assignment, I don't want to fail. I need you. I don't want to fail in my assignment. Lord, I need you. I need you, Lord. In my calling, in my assignment, I know the world are waiting for me. They want me to speak. But I need you. I have no word except what you have given me in the grace to say or to speak. I need you, Lord. I rededicate my body, my spirit, my soul unto you. I don't want to fail in my assignment. That will say we should go yield into the world and pray the goods for to the whole world since your word. Empower us. Send us to the lost souls. Send us to the lost souls, Lord. We don't want to become a lukewarm church, a dead church, but a living church that reflects you, that reflects your grace, your light, that reflects your power. Lord, empower us. Empower us, Lord. The men, the women, the young, the old in the sanctuary. Lord, empower us. The world is waiting for us. You are our providential God. You brought even Stephen all the way, Philip all the way to the Ethiopia kingdom. Lord, lead us to the right people. Take us to the right place. Those whose hearts are ready to be converted unto the kingdom, lead us unto them. Give us a word to speak unto them, Lord. That, Lord, we can depopulate the kingdom of darkness and we can populate your kingdom. We well, thank you. We well, bless you. Glory unto your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please stretch forth your hands this hour and begin to release on the life of the man of God, asking that the Lord will empower him again. Let's ask the Lord that this day that the word has come forth, let the Lord refresh him. Let the Lord energize him. I want you to stretch forth your hands, please, at this time. Amen. And begin to ask the Lord, Lord, renew his strength. Renew his spirit. Uh, let your power come upon him that he will continue to declare and proclaim your word even in season and out of season. I want you to join me together at this hour corporately. Begin to release, release God's blessing into the life of a servant. Father, we pray jointly this hour that you will continue to renew your son's strength, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that this world will not stand against him on that day of judgment. In the name of Jesus, uh, let Heaven open on his behalf in the name of Jesus. Father, he has decided, oh God, to stand for your word. He has decided to preach your word in season and out of season. Father, bless his entire life, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will renew his spirit, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Build a wall of fire around him, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Make him, oh God, a good man, that wherever his name is being mentioned, uh, where Wherever his ministry is being called, oh God, uh, there will be good things to say about him. In the name of Jesus, Father, Lord God. Thank you. 